tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to that one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Elm White. Joining me this week, as always, Ash Hobley. Hey Dylan, I'm excited to be here, man, to play listen to you guys talk about the game that I have no intention of playing, man. That's it, man. And also here is Kieran Martin. And may your death be swift. Wow. That's excessive, I feel. But anyway. Um, so yeah, we're just yeah, we're just uh, that's a weird smile to give after saying that, but that's fine. Uh, in, the, <laughs> in the trophy cabinet this week, a bronze trophy for Kingdom Hearts 3.84845 releasing later this year. A gold trophy for Crash Bandicoot getting another chance, and we hit a platinum, of course, with The Last of Us Part 2. So that's what we're going to jump into right now. This is a spoiler-free me and Kieran's thoughts on The Last of Us. If you'd like to hear our spoiler thoughts, there is a spoiler cast available right now. It's on this feed you're listening to, Platinum Explosion or ExplosionNetwork.com or YouTube.com slash Explosion Network. Find the spoiler cast, listen to and or watch the spoiler cast. Me and Kieran go for about an hour and a half, a little bit over an hour and a half, talking all things spoilers uh, about The Last of Us Part 2. But in our spoiler-free section, we're probably just mostly going to focus on the gameplay. Gameplay, because uh, it's there's not like much to talk about the story. Yeah. <laughs> It's impossible to talk about the narrative without yeah. kind of spoilers throughout most of it. So, what is your overall thoughts, though, Karen? Did you did you like the game? Did it live up to your expectations? I, I did- love this game. I love this game, especially you know it's about eight hours since I finished it. So, um, <laughs> I really, really love this game. I enjoyed a lot of it. I think um, as it might be saying towards the end of the game, the gaming, the game kind of mechanics get a little bit monotonous and overdone um but that's part of the story itself um and the game itself that it kind of does that uh i i think the game play itself i think is really fun i think they fixed a lot of things that were like kind of dated or wrong with uh with the last of us one um I, like i think nicholas Pryor will be happy to hear that the uh the bow has been fixed in this game the bow is not as uh garbage as it uh, is in the first game and how hard it is to use, really. It's quite annoying. But I think a lot of this game is is excelled. You see a lot of Naughty Dog's kind of brush strokes, you might call it, of things they've learnt from past games and, and, and things that they've brought in from the other kind of titles that they've released since Last of Us came out and was originally released. Um, what I think this game is most interesting is not only for the fact of how it kind of strives forward with gaming mechanics in many ways, but also the gaming infrastructure itself. There is very minimal to no kind of load times in this game whatsoever. Like, it's it's... The amount of times that, you know, I think the biggest thing that slows players down is the time from dying to the time where it gets you back in the game. And at least on the PS4 Pro, it was like next to no time. It was normally a second or two at most of uh, loading screen until you were ready to press X to continue. Um, the checkpointing system, at least with myself playing on the moderate difficulty, was freaking actually quite good. Like it wasn't static i didn't find myself losing lots of progression if i did die generally it would just be either a couple moments beforehand or uh, in fact i would say the checkpointing system is too uh yes. forgiving because it'll yes. literally checkpoint you like halfway through a fight even like you could kill like three out of six people yeah. and it would checkpoint you halfway through the fight and halfway like, through the fight yeah. and also when you spawn when you reload everybody is kind of back to normal or stationary mode where they're not on, on alert. alert they're not looking for you yeah um sometimes it's a bit of a compri- compromising situation because you've got like sometimes you are surrounded by people when they're reset to their default yeah, position sometimes it's better but, just um, to restart the whole thing yeah and restart the, the checkpoint is kind of like annoying but i find it weird how I, forgiving that checkpoint system was considering because i was playing on the same difficulty which is just the the normal one yeah. but it felt like it was it was like enemies hit hard but that checkpointing felt like the easy mode basically but i thought this game had a fantastic variety of like it's 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 come a long way since you know obviously it's been six seven years since the last of us so of course there's been improvements but the range of upgrades and in terms of skill-based upgrades and also things that you can craft um i think were overall fantastic and really good i think there was a wide variety to suit kind of any play style um, of gameplay that brings back things from the previous game that you kind of thought had been forgotten about, or it also kind of implements them in interesting ways that really um, bring that gameplay to light. Uh, And I think overall this game is, for the most part, is really fun just to play as a mechanical game. And as I've said a number of times on my Twitter, 
This game is, like, in my opinion, way scarier than the first one in moments. Like, there was... And that might be just me being delayed on my... Uh, like, it's been a while since I originally played the game, but... Yeah, well, when, was, when we did our replay, I, I don't think that's, like, a good uh, taste test for how scary it is, because no. I, knew, I knew where a lot of the, the stuff was. The so. jumps were... I, I, still think, I still think maybe a lot of the jumps... Some of the jump scares here weren't always... Well, not jump scares, but some of the things that made me feel tense and quote-unquote scared weren't always the um weren't always the scripted jump scares it was just the general atmosphere i think the thing that surprised me and probably the thing i probably should have thought about going into this was the range of infected creatures that there are in this game compared to the previous game where you only had three different types of infected really and now it kind of they've added maybe four or five more variations uh or no maybe two or three more maybe yeah, i feel like that's a bit high but there's there's at least a hint a couple of new ones yeah that i think shake up the gameplay quite a lot um and give it a very a nice kind of different pacing for i think as we said in our for anybody who listened to our uh playthrough of last of us one of the things we were really hoping for was that there was going to be lots of areas where both infected and soldiers were around um and that's not really the case and i think that was like it happens for a couple moments throughout the game um and it's not you know as the first game was very much uh this is the infected section this is the the soldier section and this game still had that very much which Um, my 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 whole asterisk on that is it makes sense to only run into human enemies inside like human controlled points where they've obviously cleared out all the infected yes but correct. when you're fighting the human area uh human enemies in like random patrols out in the middle of the city and you're doing these like shootouts with them and then the fact that a bunch of infected don't suddenly just start kind of creeping in kind of kills the immersion a little bit if you start thinking about it the fact that you know like it's just because in that area that the game's chosen to not have random yes enemies run in because that's like the human only area so those times it's like maybe if you stealth the entire area you never see an infected but if you do the that section of the game in a major shootout and then it would attract um infected there's no other than other than um for majority of those for the human sections especially other than having to fight your way out and fight your way through a lot of people there's no major downside of quote-unquote going loud in fights like doing stealth is recommended but i still think it's uh, i think it's more fun primarily because although the shooting is better in this and i'd say it's probably the best uh naughty dog shooting it's like i feel like i could actually hit headshots without it just randomly missing and half the time in the uncharted games i'm like that was clearly in the head and apparently the enemy's still standing it's ridiculous um but it's still naughty dog shooter which means it's fine and at least with the stealth it makes a little bit more fun and i still think they they've still as well with the upgrade elements of upgrading your weaponry and upgrading your skills i think there's a lot more kind of at the start of the game at least it's you're crappier aiming on purpose because you don't have all these perks and extra skills and and then you haven't kind of upgraded your guns at workbenches or anything like it's still yeah i think towards the end of the game for me and maybe it was a quote between i just wanted to push through it towards like the last maybe four or five hours of this game it did turn into a bit more of an action shooter for me where i was just like doing the stealth thing but i wasn't trying to go pure stealth i was okay with getting caught and then i just fight my way through areas yeah i can say that i pretty much action man the last section because i was like just get me to the end of this one (laughs) like but not for saying that that's not that's for narrative reasons that's not just well a little bit of game yeah it's both it's hard to say about spoilers but it's like i was just like i cannot be bothered stealthing this i don't even want to try just fucking i'm just gonna shoot everything (laughs) yeah shoot everything inside get it over with i don't care um, plus, I had all the guns at that stage by the time we reached the end of the, the game. Yeah, I was I was worried that I was missing guns, and then when the uh, trophy popped up for it, I was like, man. You're like, ah, that's awesome. why. Yeah. <laughs> There's not. And I think the trophy list is, you know, talk, I'm planning this way. We might as well talk about trophy list. Trophy list is actually pretty good on this game, um, other than a couple missable ones if you don't know what you're looking for or what you're doing. Like People online are uh, complaining it's too easy now. 
in the the trophy space. Too easy. Yeah, because lots Whoa. of people who got the platinum in the first one loved how they had to beat it on the harder difficulties and prove they're hardcore gamers. So now that this one uh, is a f- easy platinum, all you got to do is like follow a collectible guide basically to get it and play the game. Uh, people are like, no, it's too easy now. Fuck this. I reckon they'll just do a DLC, like add grounded mode, because th- this doesn't have grounded mode in it yet, which is the super hard one where you can't even yes. use listen mode and all that sort of shit, which they added post-release for uh, uh, with God the remastered one uh, the remastered, for the last yeah. one. So I reckon they could add that as a free update, and then that would add DLC for beating it on grounded. So then the people who care to show off they beat these games on grounded can still get the trophy for it. But the main, the main game- platinum, platinum more attainable for everyone. I guess. Yeah. Yes. And the game is also got New Game Plus as well. So yeah. there is. But you don't uh, have to beat on New Game Plus for a trophy. Like You don't have to. No, no, exactly. But it does help if you still need to, like, kind of max out some Which you will, because there's no, you, it's impossible to upgrade everything it's a, in one yeah. playthrough. Like, and I think it's, it's interesting because I think later in the game you get a lot more kind of the tablets or the pills to kind of pop up some of your upgrades and stuff. Um, but. Yeah, I think te- like those are because of the amount of upgrades and like skills that you can get in this game. There is a lot more pills in this game than there were in the first one. Yeah, because there's way more um, upgrades and stuff. Yeah. Also, the other yeah. thing we're talking about upgrades. The other thing I um, only found out after beating it when I was looking online. You know the uh, training manuals, which were also in the first game that let you unlock new skill yes. trees to upgrade. Yes. So I thought I was just really smart, trees. and I was finding them all at the. Like, I was like. I'm finding them all, fucking doing a great job. I'm finding them Does all in the Does it force you to find them? Kind of. So if you miss them in one <laughs> level, it'll kind of make them appear later in another location. Later I'm sure if you else. constantly miss them, you could beat the game without getting them all. But it's not a thing where the game, like if you miss one in like the second or third chapter, it's like, you're like, oh, I'm fucked now. The game will like kind of replace it somewhere else ahead of you kind of later. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's another chance Smart. to find it in a safe or something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. Because there wouldn't be just one. Training man. Yeah, well, Copy. Yeah. Well, they're just random I magazines. I didn't find another one after. Yeah. I didn't find another one after I found it the first time. Maybe. That's, that's true. <laughs> but I think it's it's also funny how um, I think um, and I think the easiest thing to miss for me was workbenches because I felt like, especially later in the game, I missed Were you purposely workbenches. just dodging them because one scared the shit out of you or? No. That one scared the <laughs> shit out of me because <laughs> it broke the game mechanics and what I had been taught throughout the game. <laughs> But like in the lot of last four, I was still picking up things for picking up scrap. Mm-hmm. I just didn't find a freaking. Yeah, well, I think that's just better because just, of where the last few chapters kind of take you. Yeah, so there's yeah. less workbenches, I think. Um, so I, I would say when it comes to gameplay, that's where my my biggest complaint for this game is, and Very much so. um, it it's it's to do with. The amount of combat you end up having to do, and I've, I've, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out something. I've had an epiphany, um, epiphany, no, no, a forced epiphany, basically. I'll, sh- I'll shout out to, to well played, right? Well played, well hyphen played.com.au, because, uh, Kieran over there put up a, uh, opinion piece about the, the Last of Us, and I read it just before we was recording, right? And his thing, it, it's a spoiler piece, so don't go read it. But the, the main thing he talks about in game, <laughs> Unless you've finished the game and then go read yeah, it. Yeah, unless you can. you've you go yeah. finish the thing. But to, to say it without saying spoilers, but if you've listened to our spoiler cast, I say something along the lines of, oh, if we had less of this sort of gameplay, I think that's what would have made it better. He basically says the opposite of what I said. So if you've listened to that, piece it together. And if anyone listening... There you go. Go read all of our opinion things. Go listen to all the spoiler things or whatever else. And I'm kind of on board with what he's saying. I know it's hard to say without saying, but my my complaint is there's too much combat in the second half of the game. Um, then it c- kind of kills the pacing. His, his point was maybe there should have been less combat in the first half of the game and then it would have made the stuff in the second half feel better. And to that, I'm like... You know what? That may actually be a very good. It's point. also thinking, yeah, thinking that's very true, especially with the first part of the game has a lot of traveling, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot of venturing from point A to point B. Yeah, um, see, we all and- saw the trailers. There's a horse. Yeah, there's a horse. <laughs> mm, okay, um, like so. There's there's a lot of traveling um, that that I think doesn't happen in the later stages of the uh of the game. So it's um 
It's really hard to say without kind of spoiling anything. Yeah, it is. It's really fun. It, I'm really, I don't, that's the only thing I don't envy people about when they've got review codes early is how they've had to talk about this game without spoiling. Like the embargo for this must have been insane. And as people have recorded, yes, it is insane. Um, and it has a very good right to be insane. And just for those people that you may have been spoiled by accident because of leaks very recently, the leaks ain't got shit. Like the leaks are actually nothing. The leaks barely touch the surface of where this game goes, really. So if you're like, oh, I'm going to listen to a spoiler cast because the game's leaked, so I don't care. I'm never going to play it. Don't do that. Go play the game. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So if you want to read my full review, uh, spoiler review, if you want a little bit more thoughts, explosionnetwork.com. Um, of course, as I said, spoiler cast with me and Kieran on the Platinum Explosion feed again. And then I've also got an opinion piece up myself on explosionhour.com yeah. about the, the ending as well. Um, go read all the things, all the things, all the things. Uh, Ash, what? So, let's just check in. All right, you got another question? Yeah, so now that you've finished it, are you keen for the much-rumoured Last of Us Part 2 multiplayer mode? Uh, Is that something you really want or...? I think it'll be interesting. Do, do think you think they, you'll? Do you think people will still be gurgling and stuff in that one? Probably. 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 I would say it's just. I would say. I hope they I call still, it. I, I hope they call any, it. Your do you, do you think you'll you still be able to move around with like a, one leg? Uh, no, but I hope they call it your no. PSN name when you die. Like when when I shoot my character, it's just like no. When someone shoots my character and then someone else on my team's like, ah, Viva Lo Deal. Ah, Viva Lo Deal. No. Ah. <laughs> there is a lot of that in this game, and it is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, towards the end of the game, I've heard one too many people called Zach die. <laughs> Um, and Zach it takes was you a out very a popular little name in. It was in 2013. 13. Also, shout out to freaking Naughty Dog's like attention to detail that this like every, the world went to shit in 2013. The amount of fat PS3s that you find in this game are quite quite funny. Um, because of course th- this is a world where they never got the PS4. See, also, fact check that thing. Like people are like oh, when the the reason that uh they're playing Hotline Miami on the Vita is because. The Vita was obviously still hot in 2013, and also Hotline Miami came out that year, I believe, or like the couple, mm-hmm. something like that. So it's one of the latest also, games, yeah, it's like one lots of the latest of people games. Have, uh, <laughs> lots of people have Uncharted Drake's Fortune, yeah, in that game. Yeah. Lots of people because it came out then. Jack and Very Jackson, popular game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll be keen for multiplayer. I think I think I'll. Ju- it depends how they announce it and what they do. Uh, when me and Buddy, when Buddy was on here, and we talked about the multiplayer. I said I would prefer the multiplayer to have. Uh, both just your, uh, a death match that I don't really care for, and then another mode that's uh, more hardcore into playing as a team and like tactics and like pro- maybe even some class systems and these sorts of things. Because one of my least favorite things about the multiplayer is just everyone running around fucking one team that just owns over in death match and whatever. And I'm like, this isn't fun. I don't care to be playing this. There's enough cool systems in here. You could be doing a way more interesting mode that pushes playing uh, tactically and whatever else. Um, and with all the new gameplay stuff they've got in this one, like the ability to jump, climb under things, get prone under cars, whatever else, like it could make for a lot more intense. The, the ability to prone was a massive game changer for me mentally, where I was like, oh, I could like, like, oh, this grass is too short for me to crouch in. Oh wait! If I prone, I'm good. But, Sweet. but how, did you ever crawl under a car, under a car and do the whole thing where you're like, it's a video game, enemies don't check under cars, and then I was under a car, and then the enemies like, oh, I'll check under here, and then they, they got come down, they put they they <laughs> literally pull you out from under the car. Remember that trailer they watched, showed a gameplay yep. back in the day, and everyone was like, there's no way this is real. E3 trailer. Yeah. Yeah. All of that is legit. What happens? Like you know, like they'll they'll get under, they'll pull you out of the car fucking whatever else i think that was a little bit more cinematic but it's like i'd say that was like 90 percent closer to how it ends up in the main game anyway so yeah don't don't trust anyone uh, also minor thing the, the the naughty dogs trailer game is as good as marvel yeah if not better yeah good, uh, don't good. trust anything exactly 100 percent. don't trust anything you've seen in trailers i mean even the leaks might have come from them and it was a complete misdirect maybe the possibly next level um Ash, so <laughs> Ash has kind of had um, <laughs> the entire game spoiled for him at this stage. How, how do you feel about how do you, how are you feeling about it? You're like, nah, fuck this, I'm never gonna play it. Yeah, uh, what's the? Well, I think <laughs> I think we talked about it obviously off air, and uh, Kieran said it was much scarier than the first game, not spooky, scarier. Uh, not spooky. So, so 
Not spooky. So, uh, no, not playing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm keen to like just... watch watch someone's playthrough or something like that. Like, be slightly removed and not have that intense <laughs> intensity of like controlling uh, the character, which I feel from reading your stuff Look, might. If it gives you, might have, might you be any... a different experience. Obviously, because you're not doing the things in the game yourself, but. If it gives you any comfort, there are multiple areas of bad guys that I sprinted through and got to the other side yeah. because I noped my way out of a situation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> have you have you looked up any of the like the stuff that you like you've had to know happen by having to read my thing and hearing us talk about? It? No, have I haven't watched any, of the any footage yet. Or, okay. I haven't watched any th- any footage yet. So soonish. There's some really good ones you should watch if you're not going to yeah. play the game. Yeah, there's some very cool moments that I'm like definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so now that you've finished this one as well, do you want a part three, or do you feel like this is the perfect point for the series to end? Because the rumor is Naughty Dog's obviously working on or planning for their next project. They did say that Last of Us is a possibility, uh, or they're going to do a brand new IP. Do, is this the perfect point to finish off, or do you feel like there's more story to tell in this world? I, I I would be okay if they finished here, but but you were the same I, way I after think the first one, right? <laughs> it's exactly the same way after the first one, but also I think as Dylan brought up in our spoiler cast, naughty like Naughty Dog would have said to for the build up of this game that this is the end of the road, like like they did with Uncharted Four, where they made un- very clear with Uncharted Four that. That game was going to be the end of the story and the end of that end game. End of Nathan feels- Drake's story. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. To like clarify, that was-, that was like the end of Nathan Drake's story, and that game ends, and it feels like a proper ending to Nathan Drake's yes. story. A hundred percent. I don't think it, I. I don't think it's a spoiler for me to say that. No, I would not be okay with this one being the end, and I would like more from the characters in this game. Um, no, I mean that's not small. I would like more from the characters in this game. I, in fact, I, in so. fact, I was happy without a sequel for the first one. And I never, when they announced this, I was very much on that camp of like, why it doesn't need a sequel? It's perfectly fine the way it is. And now I have the complete opposite feeling where the way this one ends, I have so many thoughts and feelings and whatever else about the characters in the game where I'm like, what is this person doing? What's this person doing? What's this person doing? You know, like I, I actually want to know now. So it's weird to go from not caring for the sequel and then all of a sudden being like, well, now that you've made a second one, fucking do the trilogy. Come on. Let's go the let's yeah. go to full three. Knock it out. Last of Us Part Three. The, here's my other thing. I, I don't know if this is a hot take, but like this game is stunning. It's probably one of the best looking games of this generation, if not the best looking game of this generation. It's, it's insane how detailed and how much shit is in the world and like the physics. Uh, in this game is off the chain. I'm sure some of you have seen Twitter. Yeah, the rope and the glass and everything. It's just absolutely nuts. Like They go nuts with glass in this game. There's just glass. Yeah, because someone made the simulation of glass and like how well it breaks and whatever else. And someone's like, well, fucking let's go ham now. And also the shit with the 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 rope and whatever. Like even uh, walking through those doors where it has like those flappy plastic bits and like the way they just fold and like come in. I'm like... This is yeah. Th- so all this game is absolutely nuts. However, I think it's too long. Needed some parts <laughs> cut down. And to me, I'm like, they spent seven years making this. Uh, bunch of crunch time. Uh, and you know, some people basically people nearly died to make this game. And at the end of the day, it's like, is it worth it? Of course no, because like I, I personally don't think that all the horror stories you hear coming out of it. I'm like, was is it worth any game? No, I don't care how good the game is. It's probably not worth going for that shit. So if they make a third one, I, I really wish that Naughty Dog would kind of figure out their um, the way they go about pre-production. <laughs> yeah, their workflow and whatever else. I think they need to get that shit sorted out first before they even go into production of anything. And then hopefully that leads to better workplace and also um, get the games out faster like they've got like at this stage surely you've got the money fucking hire more people spend less time crunching people have like, a better uh production flow have a better pre-production actually plan out what you're doing you know and this is a whole video game problem but i'm like seven years i have along for this game and the, the way it was in this, production i'm like that's too long like we need to this <laughs> game could have a hundred percent been two games yep like this could have <laughs> been two games just 
this just could have literally been two separate games in this, like two separate games in the series. Yeah. Um, and the fact that we have that in the one game is fucking astonishing, to be perfectly honest, in work rate and everything. It's um, the other thing I'll point out is that makes it quite weird is Uncharted, the Uncharted games came out like two to three years apart. Yeah, like they had really quick development cycles, and they were all top notch. Um, yeah, they're all really good. You could say then there's not as much depth in Uncharted in terms of gameplay systems. Like there's not the RPG, but you know they were massive movie like things, especially yes. like yeah. the upgrade of two to three, and then even three you got even more uh, action paced than even the second one. I, w- I will say what has happened again here, and and I think it ha- very much the first one. The first one defined a. Get a, was the bridge between two generations was opening the door to the next generation of console gaming and for me part two firmly does that again this time around that it can very happily and very easily be the bridge between the current generation and the next generation of consoles i think you could sit this on the ps5 and it would just improve the game yeah. tenfold I, I don't think it's hyperbole to say playing this feels like you're already playing next gen like, yeah, hundred percent. There is early, but like four or five hours into this game, I felt like I was like I literally said out loud, "This is the next generation of gaming. This is what gaming should be from now on." And uh, and that's for multiple reasons, not just gameplay and for um, the infrastructure of the game, but also the narrative design of this game. Yeah, it's kind of insane. Um, but yeah, so I guess the answer to the question is, yes, I want The Last of Us Part 3, but I just don't want them to take <laughs> seven to however many years and kill themselves doing it. I want them. I want it to... Like, would, would you like to see a new IP from them now? Um, yes and no. Because I think <laughs> we've seen... We've seen, like, like, Uncharted is kind of having a nap at the moment or resting or... Maybe. 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 There's a secret studio. We don't know what they're doing. It's rumored they're doing an Uncharted game. Just saying. But Yeah. But... Caitlin Diva um, became a big star. I mean, they can (laughs) pull back. (laughs) True. Um, So, I I don't know. I think it'd be interesting to see them what what else they could do. But, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll see. I don't know what they would do. Like, because Uncharted was their, like, sort of action. It was obviously their their third-person action pulpy. They have some fun, whatever. And then The Last of Us is this, you know, super serious fucking horror thriller game. I'm like, what would they go? What what kind of hardcore RPG? Maybe. I think they need to tackle, even though we have a billion of them already, I love Naughty Dog to tackle open world. But then, but. They've got like Horizon from. They've got Horizon and everything. Like full on fantasy. Maybe. Old like, school fantasy. Or also, fantasy could be very fun. Fantasy could be amazing with their kind of narrative design and everything. I just think with like. Because um, you'd, you'd assume Druckmann would be like heading up whatever the, the, the next big thing from them is anyway. And if he's heading yes. it up, I, I, I just like. I can't picture him doing like a fantasy thing or something, but who knows? Maybe as a secret fantasy side, we don't, don't know about. Possibly. You know? Maybe some like hardcore mob. Maybe he makes a Chernobyl video game while the dude who made the yeah. Chernobyl thing. <laughs> how how <laughs> do you feel about the TV series now? Are you like, I kind of don't want them. Uh, um, want them to tackling potentially tackling the. Let events me put it. Put it let me two? put it this way. After playing this, I think that the way they're going to tell the story is going to be much more influenced. Uh, I mean, the way they're going to tell the story of the first game is going to be a lot more influenced by this game and things that are revealed in this game. Like, and, and to, to the point where... It, There'll be threads of this game that get directly put into that series. Yeah, they're going to tie them... They're going to tie the first and second game yeah. in and t- tell the story a lot differently, I think, when they do the TV series. And they already announced and, that somewhat. They already said, like, it's going to have parts from 2 or whatever in the TV series. And you can, I maybe. can kind of guess... No, they said that. They they said when they announced it, like the Druckmann, whoever was like, it's going to have parts of two in it. Like it's going to have some influences from two, and I can already kind of look at two and go, well, it's definitely these parts go, that are probably going to be involved mm. in the first one now. You know, especially Very for the first so. season, and then I can kind of pitch where the you know potential cliffhanger is in second season, I guess. But and and also the, the thing, the only thing that I think now for me personally, it's made their job even harder for the relationship of Joel and Ellie. Because I just, there's so much more depth there now. Even though they're only looking at the first game's worth of depth, I still just have that connection and understanding of those characters that goes beyond that now that might, you know. Well, I, may, I'll i say this. I can't say this now. I'll say it off air. Maybe I'll put up uh, another spoiler opinion piece about it. But uh, as a, 
I just had the, the uh, highest epiphany of what the, <laughs> the the TV series could actually do that would make it super interesting now. Uh, to, 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 especially for people who, who are watching that and haven't played the games, that would make it so much more intriguing for them think, to do in the I TV think show. I, I think I'm on the same wavelength yeah. as you, but yeah, we'll talk about we'll it. Talk about that, but if you think about what I'm thinking, just imagine them doing that from the start. Like, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. And you, you never know why. Um, mm. Especially if you've never played the games, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're doing we're doing lots of secrety talks. So we should probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is yeah, like that is the Last of Us. Uh, and my, as I said in the uh, spoiler thing, I'll say it again because I find it quite weird. Just to for, for when we have this massive game, I find it so weird because this is probably the last time we'll talk about it on the podcast um, until may- maybe some news about the multiplayer or something like that comes up. But I find it so weird that we did this whole Last of Us replay segment for how uh, eight weeks or whatever it was, seven, eight weeks. I can't remember now. Um, did, you know, obviously covered all the trailers, the news, all the PS events. So even the entire time this podcast has been around, 166 episodes, we've been talking about the Last of Us for the entire time this podcast has been doing episodes, right? And now it's out. Talked about it, spoilers free, spoiler full, and now I'm not going to really talk about it ever again. You know, it's like so. Yeah, it feels <laughs> it's weird. So weird. <laughs> to- Especially when you know we've been leading up to this game for what feels like years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it got announced like in uh, 2016, and- I think, was the yeah thing. So yeah, like we've been leading up to this for so long that you know both of us feel pretty quote unquote empty right now when it comes to gaming because it's done and. uh yeah, give us yeah my a my bridge of days. my bridge uh, to the eight the first thing I played that wasn't Last of Us was I jumped in and played like an hour of uh, Star Wars Battlefront two so you know what I mean that was my like <laughs> give me something to kind of ha- <laughs> to yeah. help me not commit to something t- too uh, heavy or big or whatever just yet but yeah um, Last of Us Part two I hope you enjoyed it um, I hope yeah I mean I hope you enjoyed it if you're listening <laughs> like, you know, it's a game read all the things splashdown.com all the things. Let's jump into some news. So, first thing is that um, I said I was never going to mention Last of Us Part Two again, but we are. So, technically, it's fine. <laughs> um, so, Last of Us, Part, yeah, I know I'm a liar. Last of Us Part Two smashes sales records, um, proving that bombing Metacritic works and makes sure that no one ever actually buys the game. So, GamesIndustry.biz writes: The Last of Us Part Two has shot to the top of the UK box charts in a significant fashion. The action horror game is Sony's fastest fastest selling release this generation, narrowly beating the opening week of 2016's Uncharted 4 by just over one percent. Download sales are not included in the data, so when we factor in digital sales, it's possible the game's launch was even bigger. The Last of Us Part Two is comfortably bigger than the, its previous three predecessor, which launched uh, which launched sales 60 76 percent higher. Although it's worth noting that the PlayStation 4 is more popular console than the PlayStation 3. As a result, it's the biggest UK launch for any box game released this year so far, with sales 40% higher than that of the previous best, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, and we all know that Animal Crossing New Horizons was selling like fucking hotcakes. So pretty big numbers, yep. uh, pretty huge. I think this is significant for several reasons. A, uh, yeah, yeah, bombing Metacritic really makes sure that no one buys the game, you fucking nerds. And then uh, <laughs> B, uh, COVID-19 says what? You know, like, <laughs> like, um, doesn't matter. Nothing matters. The game sold like hotcakes. Everyone's playing it. They got it through Amazon. Hey. Oh. They, they got it through Amazon. <laughs> oh. You know, over oh. in the UK, they do it properly. No, if anyone got it through Amazon, they weren't playing Res- the game because. They, they still aren't playing the game. They're still waiting for it We're to be so delivered. sorry, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Fucking Ashley. Driving the dagger in further. The, they got it through Thames. That's <laughs> um, yeah, so that's just the UK. I don't know how well it's all here in America and everywhere else. But the funny thing in this list is uh, Ring Adventure, Ring Fit Adventure is number two. Yeah, that's been se- that's constantly selling out across the world though. Like, yeah, that's the thing. It's been sold out so long that it's surprising that it's they sold because yeah, so it sells out two. and then they get some back in stock and it sells out and they get some back in stock. They can't keep up with it. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely nuts. Crazy. Yeah. All right, so big reveal of this past week slash leak slash finally got a reveal. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. We got the first gameplay uh, footage, a proper trailer for it, and whatever else during Jeff Keighley's uh, event that happened Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. or whatever it was. Um, so Activision has announced Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, writes Jonathan Joel Bush over at IGN. A brand new canonical sequel. I love the fact they're like, this is a 
canonical sequel to Crash Bandicoot. Uh, to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, Spyro and Brilliant Night Trilogy developer Toys for Bob is behind the brand new adventure, which is set to be released October 2nd, 2020 for PS4 and Xbox One. It's about time is built from the ground up as a new experience in the spirit of the original free Crash games developed by Naughty Dog for the original PlayStation. Players can either play as Crash or Coco Bandicoot for the full adventure with other playable characters thrown into the mix like Neo Cortex, featuring a brand new art style, marking a departure from what Vicarious Visions created for the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. It's about time we'll feature new platforming moves, new masks with special abilities, two major control schemes, and plenty more. Um, so my impressions of this is it's everything I wanted it to, to be. Like I know when we was talking on RK Couch uh, last week about the uh the leaks and i was like well i really hope that it's you know they're not trying to do something too crazy and make like a 3d open world platformer type thing and it's mm. more of your, your typical crash gameplay this is what this is it's typical crash gameplay obviously they've got new uh mechanics and whatever in here but even new new mechan- new mechanics aside watching it looks like crash to be like it looks like what 2020 crash bandicoot following the same structure uh, bare premise of the Crash games. What what made me love the original Crash games so much? Watching this uh, gives me all of that. Now, ho- obviously, it could turn out to be shit when it releases. I don't know. But at the moment, it's living up to everything I could want out of it. I like the art style. Um, it still looks like Crash. Obviously, it's, it's a little bit different to the the one, as I mentioned, that from the, the Insane Trilogy remake. But it still looks like Crash. It's not like a, a wild uh, redesign of the Crash or Coco or anything like that. He's a little bit more... Um, animated i feel like he's got a few different um views or whatever else the power-ups look fun so you get masks throughout the game that lets you t- different abilities like to to, to to walk on walls and whatever else uh slow down time all these sorts of things um the the, the fact they talked about you'll be able to play as coco or crash in any level that's cool because that's what the insane trilogy did it let you swap out whenever you want uh they said that neo cortex you'll be able to play as him and they said some other characters and they said the game takes place in the multiverse so i'm assuming one of those characters is spyro just saying just calling it now just calling it now come on they said multiverse gotta have spyro sharp in this sucker uh what do you think it yeah it looks good it looks like crash which i wasn't (laughs) I, i was definitely expecting it to go in a different direction and it didn't it, it stayed more true to the original and it's uh yeah it looks looks very pretty uh and uh, you know there's some good in jokes and that kind of thing uh what was this is like the fourth adventure or something it said it's like yeah. oh i thought there were more more than that no this is the fourth time he's trying to take over the world or something yeah yeah so yeah they're like it's crash four just uh, uh just forget just like it's cramming the other installments like into a dark hole somewhere yeah, they're saying they were they're saying they're out. all like mini adventures that aren't important that may or may not have happened non-canon but they're not canon yeah <laughs> non-canon <laughs> this is the canonical fourth <laughs> game disney's come in and said let's get away with all this stuff yeah. shall we <laughs> also i've had a funny on the stream the dude explained the joke of the title of the 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 game i'm like if you have to explain it my, my dude it's not <laughs> it's the title he's like it's called it's about time because um fans have been waiting for a while i'm like oh, <laughs> and it's about time travel. Oh, I get it. We, I'm sure we can all understand the, the name. Uh, Karen, what do you reckon? Uh, I loved. It. I like. I love the art style. I love how. So, crash. The original crashes were, you know, these adventure, like, um, like these platforming games. But I wouldn't call them fast. Like, I wouldn't call them. I think like, they was for the time, of the, kind of. I mean, they were for the Sonic, time. For but the you time, could, like speed but yes. kind of. Yeah. But there were, yeah, but there were limitations and the gameplay didn't look fast. Watching the gameplay that was shown in this trailer, everything looks fast, responsive, fun to play around, very rhythmic. Um, the character models look fucking awesome and I really like them. It looks like it has more of that crash humor um, that, you know, people have come to love. So I really hope that it um, continues to build and continues to grow and, and bring a resurgence back of this style of game um, to try and maybe open the door for some other game styles that we haven't seen in a little while that um, could be revamped in their own way and brought forward to 2020 or 2021. Yeah, what, what game are you hinting at there? Um, What's in I your head as you're saying particular. that? What's in your... Well... I wasn't any particular. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It was an idea. It was a comment that I just thought to say, and I hadn't actually thought much about it. Exactly, <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's like these platformers, we don't see these anymore. And, you know, a lot of game developers have gone towards your 
battle royales and your open worlds and your action games and, and, and you know the crash followed the steps of mario into the mario world style games and he's gone back home and it looks like it should be a lot of fun so i'm excited and interesting to see what happens you know give us another sly cooper please Somebody, give us a good Sly Cooper. They give gave us, us a fourth a one good... at some stage and not enough people brought it and now look at well, the world it, we're dealing mm, with. Mm, just, yeah. yeah just, mm, they did do it. But yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, well, reboot Sly. <laughs> no! <laughs> just reboot Sly. Mm, Perfect. Um, Excellent. You'll, you'll be happy to know also in this IGN article that they like how difficult is Crash 4 and then... That the original Crash trilogy has some notoriously tough levels. Just say the phrase "road to nowhere" in any self-respecting Crash fan, and they'll <laughs> understand. Oh, I understand. I fucking understand that well, fucking bridge. This, <laughs> seeing this does make me go. I should pick up the Insane trilogy and play through the. It's the so three funny you say that because I actually saw two people on my friends list playing it today. I was like, playing it today. Like, yeah, wow. of course. And that's <laughs> that, you know that's a very normal thing that happens when people play. When people see the new games coming out, you know, me with Horizon currently, and I am going to finish it, thanks, Dylan. Um, <laughs> it, it just happens where people, it reminds people and gives them an opportunity to play the game before they come out. Uh, so when they talk about that difficulty, I find what they're doing with the difficulty here a bit, uh, a bit interesting, though, for sure. So they talk about how um, they're like, oh, the f- so quote is from, uh, who's this, Stutter, uh, from one of the people from the development team. They said, we want to have less devil- uh, difficulty spikes, um, we want to onboard players and get them into the story, but at the same time, we wanted to see if we can actually exceed the difficulty of the original games. We wanted to see if we could add in extra modes, extra challenges, extra things that we'll be talking about later to really bring the pain. A true Crash fan wants that level of difficulty, and I think we've met uh, and exceeded expectations. Uh, then they talk about the first two masks Toys for Bomb is discussing is Kapuna Wa, which offers the power of time manip- manipulation, and the other is Eka Eka, the gravity mask. Like Aku Aku, they'll both appear available at certain points in levels for players to activate to overcome certain obstacles. Uh, he says, at certain points in the levels, they'll come to your aid and they'll actually become suits on Crash and Coco. Um, with blah, 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 blah. So the slow down time, the gravity suit, and whatever else. As with the original trilogy, is known for its many secret paths and levels. Um, this game is going to have the same, but being true to the rules of the trilogy also means the game flow players can switch between two modes, retro, uh, modern and retro, which changes how many lives and Wampa fruit collection is catalogued. Wampa is, will now actually go toward end of level goals and can be used as another currency in both modes. But in retro mode, players can still have a set number of lives, collect 100 Wampa fruit to gain a new life and succeed or fail by those parameters. Um, so in modern mode, if you die, you're going to restart at a checkpoint, as simple as that. That means, okay, what are we going to do with the Wampa fruit in the other modes? They've changed it to be a currency that, of collectibles that you'll get in-game rewards with and such. So that's interesting, because obviously in the original games, Wampa fruit served one purpose and one purpose only, which was you get 100, you get, you get another life. Run out of lives, you get game over, you know, so... So, do you predict for this in terms of trophy? Yeah, lists, there's going to be a trophy. You for, think yeah. <laughs> the trophy for each mode? Yeah. Well, I'll say there's maybe yeah. just straight up one that's like beat every level on uh, classic mode or beat the game on classic mode yeah. or some something like that. I guess um, combination or something like that. Maybe it might. Maybe the trophy list will be easy and that it'll just be an option there for people. But it would make sense if there's a trophy for it. Because it would be weird to have collectibles but then have no trophies tied to the collectibles. Because if you have a trophy tied to the collectible, it means you have to be in yeah, the, other, the, the other mode, mode to be able to get... Yeah. 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 That yeah, is quite confusing. To get the tr- collectibles. Yeah. That is interesting. Uh, so we'll find out more about that, uh, I guess, over the coming months, considering it's coming out in October. So, And they're going to reveal the last couple of masks, I'm sure, and tease, announce some more playable characters because I said there's going to be several. Um, so next one is about Kingdom Hearts. So, this one comes from wellplayed.com.au. Kingdom Hearts is getting a rhythm game spin-off on consoles this year. Uh, Kieran writes, Follow this one under surprise announcements I didn't see coming. Publisher Square Enix has announced that Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory, a brand new rhythm game spin-off, will be coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch later this year. The debut trailer shows off some rhythm action gameplay, which looks like what you'd expect from a 3D take on games like Final Fantasy Rhythm. Um... Theatre rhythm, or have the fuck you say it, actually. And with Kingdom Hearts series' massive back catalogue of solo tunes, it should be a good time. Interestingly, the second half of the trailer is quite ki- Kyrie heavy and could almost be seen as implying that she's be a playable character, maybe. Uh, so the trailer's only available in Japanese. I watched it, and obviously I can't understand what the fuck they're talking about when they're discussing 
the the story, I guess, what's happening. But as silly as this sounds, like when you when it was revealed and it's like, oh, Kingdom Hearts rhythm game, that sounds ridiculous. I'm all about this. I I in general like <laughs> rhythm games anyway. You know, like do a fun one, whatever. I'm more likely to play a rhythm game if it's got a uh, tied in IP that I that I enjoy anyway, especially if it's got songs or whatever. Um, and there are a lot of Kingdom Hearts songs to pull from. Obviously, about 13 million games to to pull from. Uh, and that's all you hear in the trailer that I found interesting. So they play lots of Kingdom Hearts music, obviously like the Destiny Island theme and like some of the, the, the more darkness th- themes or whatever else. There's no Disney music though. So I'm going to be interested to f- see if the, the game comes out and it's only Kingdom Hearts original tracks and no uh, Disney, straight up Disney songs in it. Maybe Disney wouldn't allow them to do that because maybe they'd rather just do their own Disney rhythm game. I don't know. Either way, I actually think it looks pretty fun. Uh, I don't know how much of the story is going to be important for future Everything. entries. Prob- Everything. Yeah, probably. I mean, how can you how can you believe that somehow Kingdom Hearts isn't going to make sure that like a random rhythm game isn't going to be everything that they release is canon or somehow effective well, for the entire series. Me and Ash have different theories because like, I I thought I th- watching the trailer I was like I thought a lot of the Kairi stuff at the end looked like it was potentially taking place after the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, whereas Ash thought it was uh, taking place at the same time as Kingdom Hearts 3. What, what do you think on this anyway, Ash? What's your full thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, it looks interesting. I mean, it, it's cool. I guess there's been musical bits and pieces in Kingdom Hearts before. I'm thinking it could potentially be like a full retelling of the three f- stories with musical interludes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> oh no! When you when you think back to the very first Kingdom Hearts spin-off game, which was um, fuck, Chain of Memories, right? Game Boy. Um, that game was both a sequel to Kingdom Hearts one and the tie-in between one and two, but it also retold the events of the first game because uh, Sora enters a castle, forgets his memories, and then as he's walking through, working his way through the castle in that game, it goes through the whole plot of the first game while introducing you to Organization 13 at the same time, which means it's a combination of both retelling everything you already know and introducing new things. And then if you didn't play that game and you went and played Kingdom Hearts 2, it just opens with this fucking cinematic that shows you the events of Chains of Memories and like all these people in black hoods and shit. And you're like, who are they? They're important. I'm sure they were in the last game. No, dude, they were in the Game Boy game. Didn't you play it? Come on, what are you doing? <laughs> That's how Kingdom Hearts works. You know, it's the, the history. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, look, I think it's easier to assume any Kingdom Hearts game is probably important. <laughs> in some fashion or even if it doesn't have much in it there'll be like one really big key detail or character or something like that that we have to play um but i think it's also interesting this is coming out soon whatever else they just launched um dark roads or what dark crossroads yeah something. dark roads yeah on um, which is the new expansion to the mobile game yeah i don't know if I the mo- was it i don't think was it out here already i don't remember well, i never played it anyway it was a yeah it's an expansion on that so they launched that then they've revealed this um, so Kingdom Hearts isn't going away anytime soon, but yeah, I, I I'm I'm keen to play this. I'm just hoping it's not too long though, because I kind of prefer these rhythm games, just, like the campaign anyway. I kind of just prefer it to be like six hours under type thing. I don't, but there'll probably be like six hours of cutscenes and six hours of gameplay, a combination of everything. Either way, okay. All right. So uh, PS5 is apparently customizable, so everyone can calm the fuck down. Uh, over at Push Square, told you, Sammy Marco. Barker writes. No, Ash, don't. 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 <laughs> uh, they write. Not everyone loves look at the PlayStation Five, but the console comes under fire for some for reasons beyond its unorthodox sense of style. Some fans, for example, believe it would look better in black. Shh. And they've dreamed up some mock-ups to demonstrate their point. <laughs> Fortunately, it sounds like there will be some alternate colors available at launch. PlayStation VP of U- UX UI UX Jesus Christ UX design Matt McLaurin, who's who's been alarmingly candid about the system's user, user interface, wrote on LinkedIn that we'll definitely see some special editions. He also added that the PS5 is also customizable in some ways the previous gens weren't. It's unclear exactly what he means by that. I'm going to assume maybe it means that you can straight up just list off, lift off the plate and replace it, maybe. Because that's something I always, like, they never did with the any of the PS4, although they could have done that. Like, they could have just sold... The plate that you can just slide off um, to get inside where the hard drive is, they could have been selling like 
different ones of those with different designs of Sony characters or whatever on them, but they never did that. So I'm going to say that maybe if this one, like the way you get inside to replace your hard drive or whatever else. It, it depends because I, I bet, other than replacing the hard drive, I bet they didn't really want to kind of promote people pulling apart part of their place. They promoted, their they literally sold Sony branded hard drives though. So it was like, here, replace your hard drive. Mm, but I guess if anybody's replacing the hard drive, they're generally more knowledgeable on how to do it somewhat well it was really easy for the ps4 the ps3 because they never promoted it that one was a lot harder to get into because i remember i I did that one and it was like fuck do i even find that where's the hard drive like what what am i looking under here whereas for the ps4 (laughs) it was like slide the the cover off they've literally built it so it slides off and there it is it's right there front and center pull that bit out off you go you know so they designed it that way so i presume they designed this one some way maybe because they're just going to let you take that whole top top uh what do you want to call that part off maybe they'll take sell different the white various, piece off. yeah take the white piece off and um replace that i don't know but yeah the bottom say, piece might be a bit more difficult because yeah, that's where the disc drive is on the, the optical drive yeah, yeah. in the, in the, the one if you, well, you just don't you just don't have one of those yeah it's the answer to all problems i guess just is the is the answer to everything just don't have a disc drive um I also find it weird that it, he's mentioning that there definitely will be special editions already, especially considering I'm like, are they already planning special editions? Because that would be odd. Like, I wouldn't expect to see a special edition I until like six months after have. launch or something. Didn't I believe they've said that they're planning on doing special editions like the... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He said, but I'm like, why are they planning them already? Just Well, obviously there's going to be a Horizon one. Oh yeah, maybe. That's true. But that's probably not at launch though. Next year in March, when Horizon comes out. Yeah, so let's just tie that into the next story. So it could be uh, like a day one edition. No, oh no, probably not. Uh, VG twenty four seven writes: story, Horizon right? the Forbidden West will have virtually no loading screens, and the developers are targeting a twenty twenty one release date. So of course, this was disappointing. But we uh, also, I find it weird that this was announced last week in a developer diary and wasn't just made very clear in the original ps5 event they could have just said hey 2021 unless it literally took them a week to go nah it's probably not coming out this year because that's weird <laughs> so in a short developer video guerrilla games discusses horizon for- forbidden west and what to expect when you get your hands on the game according to the video the area in the game is a mysterious new frontier that stretches from utah in the u.s all the way to the pacific o- ocean and west coast so i i, I don't know i presume it, since you saw the Fran- san francisco sign or whatever somewhere between utah and the pacific uh, pacific ocean is san francisco right maybe you're crossing different fucking countries uh gorilla wanted to make the world more beautiful and vibrant mean different states? states whatever i don't know maybe in, in, <laughs> whatever it's fucking alternate <laughs> robot history Gor- gorilla countries. wanted to make the world more beautiful and vibrant and thanks to the ssd on the ps5 there'll be virtually no loading screens so when you open up the map to fast travel from one end to the other, restarting from a checkpoint also will be super fast. When you boot up the game, you'll be right there in the action. The map this time, uh, the map this time out is a bit bigger and will feature lakes and rivers that players can swim in. There'll also be dozens of new machines to encounter as you explore. Each will need to be scanned and studied in order to fight them effectively. You also come into contact with some new tribes, some of which are peaceful and others not so much. One of the not-so-friendly tribes has discovered not discovered knowledge on how to override the machines in order to use them as beasts of war in combat. Another challenge is the red blight affecting the land, which is choking the plants, animals, and starving tribes. The weather is also out of whack, <laughs> forming supercell storms, flooding the prairies and the fields. As Aloy, you'll get to great, go to great lengths to escape uh, to save the world. Uh, so it is coming for... They're aiming for 2021, is what they, they announced. Uh, I like the word aiming. Yeah. A uh, bit disappointing. So at, at this stage, I'm going to presume that Spider-Man is now the uh, launch PS5 big game. A big game? I mean, it's a smaller game, but it's their big game, I guess. You know? Which which brings up some good points if we want to go into the console wall stuff, because if Xbox launches with Halo... Um, does Halo beat and Spider-Man? Hellblade. Does Halo beat Spider-Man? Yes. yes. Even though Spider-Man sold like fucking hotcakes, does it still beat it? I still think Halo is a bigger idea. Even though the brand's kind of in the shit at the moment after everyone hated the last two? Yes, just because simply... I know I... from This might be biased to me of saying, but just because it's like, you know, it, it's like uh, uh, the it's Spider-Man Lite. Like, it's not a full Spider-Man experience. If you were to say Spider-Man 2 is coming out against Halo, I'd say yes, 100% that is 
a full like that is you know that is equal better that's better than halo at the moment but i think the fact that halo should be a full game and a full experience is should should be i'm still you know i'm still reserving that and we've got to see what microsoft says in july but i'm not saying i still think a date that soon, probably. Yeah. What was I that? They'll have to announce a date for that thing soon. Like we're yes, nearly near yes. the end of June. Yes, um, but I think I think it's like Xbox has an opportunity here to capitalize on there being no Horizon. Because as I've previously said, if there was a Horizon at launch, Microsoft sent some shit. <laughs> like they they got problems. Does it? Are you just going to slow down on your time of beating Horizon now? Or? <laughs> You still gonna make sure you beat it, say? <laughs> um, no, I'll still beat it. Like if I if I don't beat it in like my current lineup, I'm like there's no point in me. How how far like, did you end like, up getting before um, Last of Us? A lot further. So before the Last of Us, I have done a so. Uh, I can't actually remember, but it's way further That's than good. I'd previously played it. Like I played maybe six to eight hours already of it, of a billion hours to go. Um, like I've got the I can like change I've done like the second armory or core or something the first core so you, I can now take over like the sawtooths and stuff like that Um, I had attacked a base the the ones that had tried to kind of overrun our tribe I tracked them down with the chief with the war chief or whatever showed them them over showed them what what yeah damn right yeah, I was doing a whole bunch of side missions of clearing up the corruption in the world in the area so I can move forward. Here's a question. Did you, throw, did you throw the rock? Did I throw the rock? At the kid. No. <laughs> oh. No, no, I didn't. No, I threw the rock. Well, technically I did. I threw it and knocked the other rock out of his hand. I was just like, that's not good enough. You should have fucking hit the kid in the face with the rock. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Little twerp. Yep. Uh, and the... F- Final news story for this week, uh, Kotaku writes, in a blog post early Tuesday morning, oh, hold on, skip that, uh, ever wondered why, whether Ready at Dawn, the studio responsible for the Order 1886 would be following up with a <laughs> sequel? The answer today is what, that while there might be a chance, it'll now be in VR. So, uh, in a blog, par- blog post early Tuesday morning, Oculus's Vice President of VR slash AR content, Mike Verdu, announced that Ready at Dawn had been acquired by Facebook's Oculus division. Ready at Dawn, the studio founded oh, no. by former Naughty Dog and Blizzard staffers, started life by working on titles for Sony platforms such as Daxter and God of War Chains at Olympus. The devs branched out into their own AAA experience with the Order 1886, as well as smaller indie projects like Deformers. Over the last few years, Ready at Dawn's focus increasingly shifted to VR development. In 2017, they released Lone Echo, as well as the multiplayer spin-offs Echo Arena and Echo Combat. As part of those games, the co- company developed their own method for continuous locomotion and full-body inverse uh, k- kinematics and it's the suit of abilities that which obviously caught the uh, facebook's eye it's facebook slash of course Ocu- facebook owns oculus so it's not like facebook buying them in case anyone isn't aware and they're like what uh mm-hmm. so quote as part of oculus studios team ready at dawn will continue creating memorable immersive and innovative vr content for gamers around the world as an independently operated studio uh verdu said in the blog ready at dawn's next project is echo dawn 2 although the blog adds that Quote, we are not announcing future projects at this time. The Echo VR games will continue to be supported on existing platforms, uh, Verdu noted. Ready at Dawn has exciting plans for future games. A quest port for the Echo VR is still in development, blah, 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 blah. Um, so pretty sure that uh, the order... 1887, which, you know, Nick's been waiting for two years, two, three, four years no, at this point. No, 1880... Whatever he used to say. 18, Whatever 18, he used 18, to say. No, Wasn't it 74? Yeah. Wasn't it 74 we went backwards? Like, we, we instead of going forwards, we went backwards with the date. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the backwards. original date was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was we was wanted a prequel. a prequel. We didn't yeah. We wanted a prequel. We didn't want a sequel. Um, well, he's not getting it. How'd he get that all. mustache? That's what we wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> how was it grown and groomed? And how did he get through the awkward mid-stage? Yeah, he grew it. Spoilers. Um, I think this is, this is cool for them, but also disappointing because it is like that that slight chance anyone had been holding on to for the a chance that sequels down just gone so sorry zach i think yeah sorry, zach. facebook gaming is a monster that we need to band together and put down <laughs> why <laughs> i mean the- after today oh, mixer as well, it has grown immensely after it 
helped kill Mixer. To, to be fair, or Ocu- they Oc- tried to save it. Well, they tried to, yes, correct. But then um, Oculus game. Gaming has been buying up a few. Like uh, they brought Beat Games at the end of last year, so they brought up Beat Saber basically at the end of last year. So um, for them to, to to now purchase up Ready at Dawn, I think, is them like saying, "Yes, what you are doing is high caliber shit because we're we're Oculus and we only want." Hot, put money into high caliber shit, so um, that's good. Also, I think it's it's interesting that they said they'll still rock as an independent studio, and then um, they could that means you could still put Echo Games onto PSVR if they want to, and whatever else. So um, that's intriguing, nonetheless. But um, mm. RIP to the order, I guess. I mean, I mean maybe I, I don't. Does Sony own the IP, or uh, I guess or is it a Radiant they... Dawn IP. What? Sony or do probably, they have some sort of? Yeah, I, I I would guess off the top of my head that Sony owns it. Yes, unless there's some weird thing going on there. Yeah, that... cool. Stick <laughs> Blue Point on it. Let that be their next game. Our next game Let is even bigger than Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Yes, Ashley. I mean, Karen. Is that a? Well, I, I've heard Blue Point have got this other don't, idea don't, kicking around. If you say about, anything about a pen, if you say anything about, about a pen, I'm gonna fucking. No, it's about a hero mm-hmm. who is venturing across a barren wasteland mm-hmm. just filled with valleys and rivets. And it's his job to fill that with beautiful art in the shape of letters as Bluey the Blue Point <laughs> Pen bursts onto the scene <laughs> and smashes the blank notebook no. in his way to fill so and be fulfilled. It's Concrete Genie? Yes, but Bluey the Blue Point Pen. I don't know why you're so obsessed with Bluey the Blue Point (laughs) Pen, considering the meme in joke is so obscure (laughs) and so old on this podcast history. Like, it doesn't even come up regularly. It only comes up when you're on the show. So, like, if people regularly (laughs) listen and it's only me and Ash, it never comes up. It's when you're (laughs) on the show and we bring up Blue Point. (laughs) Exactly. That's fine. It happens more than you'd like to, like, that it should, but... Ah, oh, it's great. It's just fantastic. I've missed you all, Platinum Explosion listeners. Um, if you'd like to see, hear more of my Bluey the Blue Point pen, revolt and ask me to come back to Platinum Explosion on a more permanent basis. Thank you very much. <laughs> <sighs> I think that meme's from like literally over 100. It's over 100 episodes ago. <laughs> it's so long ago. It's <laughs> when I used to be on this show regularly. <laughs> so old. It'd be like episode 40 uh, something probably. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, it's before Ashley pushed me down a hole that I had to climb back out of to get to his called Overwatch. I actually, yeah, that's true. That, that <laughs> hole is cool. I actually think it, I wonder if I could quickly find it. I mean, not to completely like kill the- Not to, not to derail not to the, derail episode, the show, but I mean, you already derailed it. You know. Okay, but but the, the, blue, the, the, I think I can search on my app. I can type in blue and see- The hype of Bluey the Blue Point Pen is really, you know, it's it's hype driven and we've really, you know, driven this off right off the rails this episode. Um this but I think the audience needs to know. Hey, I couldn't find it. I typed it in. I thought it was the title of the episode. Or like, I I, t- <laughs> I, I, I thought the one where you brought it up consistently had been typed into the fucking thing. Ah, uh, the adventures of Bluey the Blue Point. Yes. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be a chronicle. I should still search. It's going to have there. its own parts, like part one and part two. No. In part two, we introduce like a whole pencil case worth of no, characters. I'm ending the show. Ash has until end of the show to magically find it. If not, no one will ever know what episode it's from. Uh, you can follow us all no. on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. You can suggest topics for the show, of course, or send in questions by emailing mail at explosionnetwork.com with the subject line Platinum Explosion. Don't tweet that Karen asking me anything about fucking Bluey. Um, until next week, remember that every trophy counts. Hey! Don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening and you can drop a review if you can. Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExplosionNetwork.com and please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Ko-fi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.